Hey, hey, y'all, what's up? Welcome back to FED Elements. Uh, in the last episode, you will remember we did a very simple wave turn using force, and here you can see I perfected it just a little, and I got a request from Nicholas Labbe for an off-axis air time hill. So what I decided to do here, you can see, is the final product. What I decided to do instead was to do the turnaround uh, from Kentucky Kingdom's RMC instead. Now, I can go back and do an off-axis airtime hill, just specifically airtime, uh, Nicholas, if that's exactly what you want, but I thought this was a good start for you. Um, <clears throat> so here you can see it, an image of what the the turnaround was that I was going for. Uh, it's fairly simple to do. The other image from the same ride shows just the trick track double up, which sort of features the same idea. So uh, Nicholas, if that's what you're looking for, let me know and I can do that as well. Uh, I think that's probably done with geometric sections. So that should not, uh, geometric sections are definitely more trouble to work with in four sections. You can certainly get exactly the sort of track that you want from them, um, but it's difficult. So uh, one thing I do want to say is I went first, went back and corrected this, uh, this wave turn just a little so it's much closer to 90 degrees and it doesn't protrude out quite as much. And the reason I did this is I think I'll just go ahead and use this track as an example for all upcoming RMC elements, just so we'll have one sort of RMC ride altogether. Now, by no means does this mean that this is what I would design if I were doing uh, an actual RMC. It's just meant to be sort of all in one cohesive place. And as always, I will add this file for you in the comment section or in the uh, description so that you can download it uh, and look at it if you want. So I don't think I did a too bad of a job here. Uh, I realize in uh, the last comments I got from someone saying that they didn't think that RMC designs by forces, which I imagine is absolutely 100% true. I doubt any manufacturer uses forces solely. Um, maybe B&M, but, uh, and they certainly don't use a tool as simplistic as FVD. But for us, for what we have available, we have hand building, we have FED. Uh, I think it's a good way to approximate what they're doing. So you can see here the graph itself, not too difficult. There's nothing really strange going on in this. If we start coming up the hill, uh, you see right here is when I start rotating the uh, axis to be, or rotating the uh, turn just so it gets up to about a 28 degree bank. And this is happening while the track is going down into the airtime moment. So up here, we are going straight airtime and we are off axis. And then immediately we roll back over here as the normal forces increase to a positive, And I believe it's about 3.8, which is just a little bit high, but... That's what we have here. I was just trying to get the look I wanted for. I did also include a little bit of lats right here just because what happens is oftentimes when you rotate around a heart line right here, it sort of throws the track off. And it, if you look at the shadow of this, uh, let's look here. You can see that it's just sort of not no longer going 100% straight like it actually would, I think, on an RMC. Based on the photos I was looking at, uh, they're still actually straight. So I tried to... In improve that just a little bit by using this lateral force but then I noticed later on that if I left the lateral force out it still it still kind of looks accurate so let me see hold on just a second here and this is too close so I spent some time getting that accurate where it crosses over and it doesn't uh, interfere with that track so I'm just going to leave that in there for now I don't think it's going to make a big difference uh, so then, of course, we have the positive G's up here where it's going around the turn. And then as it goes down to the negative and back up into the positive again, uh, we just rotate off axis and then flip it back around. We get as close to zero as possible as we can right here. I think I got to like 0.3 or something like that. And then I always throw in right there a 2-0 function uh, just to get it as close to, or 2 zero actually takes it right back to zero. Uh, and I realize some of you have a version of FED that doesn't have that. So I think in the description I have a link to the version I'm using. But I don't really think it's necessary as a matter of fact. Because here you see uh, this is where this ends right here. You can see that we're at negative uh, 3.2 or 1.207. 
this is actually where it ends. So it's about 0.4, which is perfectly fine. Uh, it just gets absolutely back to zero at the end of that. So that's about it for making this sort of thing. The next time I will do an, uh, I'll try the actually the uh, trick track double up, and I think I will use a let me a geometric section for that. Geometric sections can are very precise, but they're also because of that uh, very, much more difficult to work with than a four section. Once you get the hang of working with a four section, it's really simple to do, uh, I, I don't think this took me, but maybe 20 minutes or so, but uh, geometric sections are much more uh, precise and much more difficult to work with. And one thing I do want to point out as well, I've said this before, but always make sure that you click your smoothing button right here and select that the correct, or this is the main track overall, these are each section of the track. I always just enable the first section and hit OK, uh, because what that does is you'll see here, you can see a very faint dash line right there that sort of follows along here, but it's not 100% accurate. And you see right there, it goes straight through there. What that happens is, or what that means is, rather than the the rate of, of roll changing and sort of stopping right there and then starting again it just goes it keeps changing very smoothly and that results in a much smoother ride so always make sure with your smoothing that you have at least the first uh, section or the first overall ride smooth because it really does make a huge difference so let's go ahead and take a ride on this real quick uh, we'll get a look for how it rides and then that will be the end of this episode so let's go all right, so here we are. Let's take a ride on this really fast. Now, the lift is really fast. Uh, I'm just trying to get up to the top as quickly as possible. Don't worry about the colors or anything like that. So we'll get up to the top. Now, remember, the first drop as well, I really was not trying to do anything RMC-ish with that, so that's totally off. So, And we're riding in the back seat because I always think you can tell much better in the back what is actually going on with the ride in terms of smoothness and just if the elements are working out correctly. So here we go, let's see what happens here. All right, so not too bad. Um, <clears throat> one thing too to notice is I did not run a depump on this. If you do, be very careful about which sections you depump. I think it's okay to depump the hills, but the wave turn itself, uh, maybe I would do it to about right here or so. And these off axis turns, I would not depump because uh, I think No Limits will probably try to fix that. I did do, I did depump one. Uh, before and it didn't it, it wasn't too bad but I definitely noticed a difference and it wasn't what I like so be careful about that but otherwise you can see for a quick effort uh, for me not spending a few hours on this trying to really recreate something I think it looks all right uh, you can let me know what you think in the comments but otherwise that's gonna be it for this episode uh, if you have anything you want to see in FVD elements just let me know and I will get it up for you otherwise that's gonna be it uh, join me tomorrow when I will be live from Dollywood. Take care and enjoy the ride.